Emily, waiting for you is like waiting for rain in this drought. Useless and disappointing. <laughs> I was late to this recording session, so it feels really on brand, but this is <laughs> this is our intro today. No, you weren't that late. We we yeah. watched Drag Race while you weren't gone, so yeah. it, it was It okay. all works out. So, welcome to The Swamp. Uh, the Swamp is an acronym. Stands for some whack-ass movie podcasting. My name is Dara. I'm Emily. And today, we have a guest! Erin, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Erin. I watched The Cinderella Story with Dara earlier, and I have a lot to say about it. Hell yeah, Taylor. <laughs> if, you didn't, if you didn't understand that quote, honestly, just leave. Like, just leave mm-hmm. and go watch the movie mm-hmm. and then come back. Because mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's the most iconic line of dialogue ever delivered by an actress in the 21st century. At least in, 20, <laughs> at least in 2004. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say, I was like, are you sure about that? Are you kidding me? Hilary Duff bodied this role. No one could wrong. ever. The way that she was simultaneously stupid <laughs> and going to Princeton at the mm-hmm. same time. No, I don't know how she does it. <laughs> no discernible major, no discernible academic But interest. she's going to Princeton. She's going to Princeton. That's we don't we know. know for what, but she's going. Yeah, right. We were discussing earlier. We're like, what, what are your, like, like, what are your interests? Because she's like, I'm Going taking, to Princeton. Yeah, she's like, I'm taking no, no. 27 AP classes. I'm like, in what? What what do you what are what do you want to do? Baseball. Baseball quotes. Yeah. Inspirational uh-huh. baseball mm-hmm. quotes. Yeah. <laughs> because Chad Michael Murray, at least, Air, what is his name? Aaron A. Abrams? A- A- Austin, Austin, Austin Ames? Austin, Austin Ames. <laughs> and, and Abraham Lincoln. Um, at least he is, like, quoting poetry yeah. and expresses he, an interest. I want to do creative writing. Yeah, he expresses an interest in, like, literature, poetry, writing. He wrote some bad poetry and yeah. some emails. Yeah, yeah. Some, some email poetry. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, I, you know, that counts for something. That at least gives us a fraction of insight to him as a person. Yeah. What? So, tell me one fact about Hilary Duff's character other than that she's poor. Sam, literally, her dad said one thing about Princeton, and she's like, I'm going. I'm going to Princeton. And that's it. If a a person wants to go to a college solely based on the fact that their parents said to them, princesses go to Princeton, then you shouldn't go. You should just be denied admission Mm -hmm. solely based on that fact. What did did her college essay look like? I was just going (laughs) to ask that. What did she write about? No, are you kidding? If I was the admission counselor and she talked about Jennifer Coolidge, I'd be like, you're in, bitch. She's like, my evil stepmother murdered my father, Mm -hmm. took over the family diner, makes me Mm. slave away. She's Mm -hmm. an indentured servant is what she is. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, but no. you, Erin, uh, you have a really great theory. I have a theory. I have a murder theory. Yeah, the murder theory. Oh my god, of, enlighten me. <laughs> of what's her name in the movie? Sam. Uh, Sam's Sam Montgomery. Dad. Sam, Sam's dad. Widowed. No, the mom is dead. First thing in what the was movie. What's his name? Hal. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the diner was called Hal's Diner. Was we never that not actually, his name? <laughs> I'm assuming it's his name. We never actually hear mm-hmm. his name spoken in the movie. I but believe. like dialogue one, <laughs> the mom is dead. Dialogue two, the dad soon. To be dead? <laughs> but, and then we get the... I think it's suspicious. I think there should be a Netflix documentary about this because, <laughs> like, there's an earthquake. We discussed mm-hmm. this at length during the movie. Uh-huh. Well, not at length, maybe like... No, I, I would say at length. It's they live in California, prone to earthquakes, prone mm-hmm. to droughts. A lot of environmental issues tackled risky, in this film. Risky, risky, risky area. But mm-hmm. so the, the the widowed father, he Jennifer Coolidge falls into his arms at the diner and he thinks to himself, like, My my young it. daughter needs a mother figure. Mm-hmm. Who better than Jenny Coolidge? Yeah. And not the uh the loving manager of the diner who obviously could have you know, could have been a mother figure. Yeah. yeah. Obviously invested in the diner, invested mm-hmm. anyway. This is getting away from my from my murder theory. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> I gotta hear it. Yeah, so you know, we see the house before you know, the death. Mm-hmm. We see the house before the death. We see Jennifer Coolidge oh before God. the death. I had this exact th- same thought, I think. Okay, he dies in an undescript way in the earthquake. Mm-hmm. We don't see... Oh, obviously. This we don't see the this death a, yeah. scene. We don't, this is a PG movie. Yeah. We don't see a maimed body. He's not crushed by a The house case. is fine, though. The house right? is fine! The house is fine. The house is fine. The house is structurally unaltered. A two-story home, might I add. Between the paint job in Act 1 and then the paint job in Act 2, which mm-hmm. is... Pink and obviously meant to be heinous, but yes. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> like, on 
listening throughout this movie, I'm like, Jennifer Coolidge, I kind of get it. Yeah, I kind of like what she did with the place. But, yeah, okay, here's- I what, love her style, but I think she killed her husband for do, the insurance money. How do you think she, she did it? She pushed him into know. the earth. I don't know. She into bashed, the earthquake. She bashed his head with a, a cinder block and then was like, ah, oh, damn earthquake. She probably, damn earthquake. She probably, like, pushed, like, a grandfather clock on top of him or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I saw a grandfather clock in that hallway when she was, like, gra- when their hands, like, slowly parted for the last time. Okay, here's my... I prefer, if I were directing the R-rated version of yes. this movie, uh-huh. I would, like, say, oh my god, my husband, Jennifer Coolidge giving the, the Oscar-winning performance was yes, like, yes. I, my husband, he died in the earthquake, it's so tragic, mm-hmm. people die in earthquakes, that's, that's not suspicious, but mm-hmm. then you cut to his body and he's clearly been stabbed. <laughs> yeah. 40, 47 <laughs> times in the chest. The earthquake uh, dropped a box of knives on him. It's very tragic. I watched it happen. It was awful. He fell it into so a awful. knife. He fell into a knife ten times. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but my issue with this with this predicament is that a young Hillary Duff, a young Sam, they're in the bedroom, they're reading the the fairy tale, mm-hmm. and then the earthquake starts a rumbling, and the dad the dad says. Wait here. Mm-hmm. And because do you hear Jennifer Coolidge from the downstairs yep. saying, Help! And he basically, it's like a big thing. Was like, she actually in any danger, though? Jennifer that's the Coolidge. question. Well, it, was, it was the house rumbled. We saw a little rumble. She was probably shooken. I would be. I mean, but he hears help. And basically, I think that's like the whole he's choosing Jennifer Coolidge over his daughter. And that's why he died because he deserved it? Question mark. Uh, mean, but, 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 why the fuck are you leaving your seven year old child on the second yeah, story right? of a fucking house why in not? an earthquake? Take her with you! Why mm-hmm. not bring her with you? But yeah. then Jennifer Coolidge oh. would have killed her too. Jennifer Coolidge is calling from the basement where it is safe in this earthquake. Mm-hmm. Let's go! Wh- wh- I don't. I don't know enough about earthquakes to say. I only know mm-hmm. about hurricanes and you know active shooter drills. So. All I have to know is that Hal died, and maybe he deserved it because Jennifer Coolidge. That's a really hot day. Jennifer Coolidge got hella breast implants with that insurance money, mm-hmm. and I gotta say, she looked fabulous. Yeah. So yeah. and she as one would honestly repainted the house. Mm-hmm. She repainted the diner. She repainted the diner. Rebranded. The yeah, diner. rebranded. Yeah. Rebranded fully. the diner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, like, somehow kept all the same staff on board, which it takes them the entire movie to quit. Yeah, and I'm right, like, yeah. you didn't just quit as soon as this, like, heinous bitch comes up in your joint and starts telling you, if you're a bus boy, you have to wear roller skates? I- I'd be like, this is minimum wage. It's 2004. What, what is that? Six bucks an hour? Not oh, for if me. That, if that. Oh Not for me. That was part of probably one of the most unrealistic things about this movie is that they're doing some like crazy wacky like serving on roller skates. No, even even Sam. Don't they do that at Sonic? I don't know that they still they, do. No, I don't they, think so. I think they just, there was an accident at some point and they got rid of They bring your food yeah. out to your car on roller yeah. skates, which is like five trained servers. Do. Like, that would be my guess, you know? They don't make the bus boys. They don't make the dishwashers you, fucking wear you, roller skates. Like you probably need like a bachelor's degree. <laughs> <laughs> you're but, an Olympic athlete. Yeah, to, to on serve your, food. In the off season, you're yeah, an Olympic yeah, athlete. Yeah, exactly. Uh, slumming Chris, it at yeah. Sonic. It's like Christine, what's her name? Christina Yamaguchi or whatever. Yeah. It's like she She's the only one qualified to bring <laughs> to out food it, yeah. and serve it on roller skates. It would be like an OSHA violation otherwise. <laughs> like it's not safe. So if it's you like, don't have an Olympic figure skating medal, you cannot work at Sonic. Sonic no, yeah. no. So just the one, the one location. It's got to be at least a silver though. If you're yeah, bronze, no, you know, no, you're not. No, you're not not quite cutting it. Not yeah. <laughs> Do we? I mean, this movie uh, essentially is a retelling of Cinderella. Loose. I'm gonna say a loose retelling yeah. of Cinderella. Uh-huh. But if we want to do like a hot recap, if you haven't yeah. seen this film, if you haven't seen this work of cinema, mm-hmm. it was. I was shocked that it wasn't a Disney. Uh, this was not a it Disney. It wasn't. O- no, this was not a Disney operation. I didn't know that. No, not a Disney operation. Huh. Totally. I, I assumed it was. Yeah. No, yeah, completely. Well, Hillary Duff was like chained to Disney for the yeah. longest yeah, time, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I just assumed. Yeah, Lizzie McGuire. It was actually a pretty big deal when she got signed on to this. They huh? didn't get the funding for this movie until they got H. Duff, mm. <laughs> and then as soon as she signed on, they were like, "Here's your budget." You know, yeah. they're uh-huh. like, "This girl, she's big right now." So they. They got the budget because of Hillary Duff, but it's not a Disney production, which I, I was pretty shocked as well. Yeah. But question, was this uh, pre 
Lizzie McGuire or post, post. Lizzie McGuire? Post. Mm-hmm. I think I, I might argue a little bit during. During, there, yeah. There might have been some Lizzie McGuire happenings during and after this, I would maybe guess. But this was 2004. Well, she was 15 well, during the filming of this really? movie. Really? She was 15. And oh, my God. Do you want to hear something creepy? Yeah. Chad Michael Murray, 22. Oh. Uh, Googled it. Lizzie McGuire ran only two seasons. Really? And, uh, 2004, really? Really? Okay, huh. yeah. Yes, yeah, so this was post Lizzie McGuire, Jenner intern, fast fact checking. Um, what would we do without you? <laughs> I mean, Lizzie McGuire was such a cultural. Right, for two seasons? Moment. Are you kidding yeah. me? For my generation in particular, mm-hmm. I mean, I couldn't escape it. See, Honestly. Here's, here's my thing is, I feel like we were a little bit past it. I don't know. I, you, I, I watched, no, I watched it religiously. I, I loved nope, that show. Nope. It was because I had this family friend who was blonde and had bangs, and so she loved Hilary Duff because she they were kind of physically resembled each other. Uh-huh. And, and like she just this saw movie, herself in her. Oh, yeah, and this movie and anything Hilary Duff related, it was like the mm. sleepovers. I did not get to pick the movie. It was it was all her and mm-hmm. it was always a Hillary Duff yeah. moment because she would like in her diary write like and then I walk down the stairs in my wedding gown dress and all eyes are on me because she like she wanted to mm-hmm. be she Hillary wrote Duff. self-insert fan fiction with her as Hillary yeah. Duff yeah That's, but like at age seven yeah. so it wasn't quite see, so coherent like the thing but is I, I can't blame her you know yeah, it fair. happens it happens but to like the best on that best. same sort of tangent like I didn't really watch this movie a lot as a kid I watched the Disney version, another Cinderella story, which With Selena was Gomez? Selena Gomez. Gomez. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. let me be fair, this is totally the better movie, but that movie did have some bangers on it. <laughs> the, the soundtrack, the soundtrack to this movie slapped so hard yeah. in 2004. Mm-hmm. I for sure had it oh, on yeah. CD, used it in my Bratz Rock Angels CD player, for sure. <laughs> uh, this, yeah, the soundtrack, mm-hmm. the Hillary Duff insert songs originals for Mm -hmm. sure were really good but i recall the another cinderella story with hillary duff and then did you ever see the third remake no with lucy hale and they made they did a a lot of sense a third remake it makes sense that you saw it because you were the biggest lucy hale fan i was yeah Uh, it was it was they got worse and worse i remember uh, and that was a little past our time i think Uh, at that point i was like maybe 11 and Mm. i was like this shit sucks (laughs) But did you watch it just because you felt a oh, connection yeah. to Lucy Hale? Of course, and you know the Cinderella story trifecta. Yeah, you, you have know. to like round it out. It's like Mean Girls too. You know, you yeah. got to give it at least one shot. I didn't. I did. I never saw yeah, Mean Girls me too. Oh, okay. maybe just me <laughs> them. It was Harper. I, Harper, the friend from uh, Wizards of Waverly Place. Yeah, she was the. She was in Mean Girls too. Huh. She was the Lindsay Lohan character. Mm, I, I can see that. Yeah, no, it's probably yeah, no. like the fourth Indiana Jones movie, in that I kind of just deny its existence. Altogether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, it didn't happen yeah. if I don't acknowledge it. Oh, I for real. I thought this was like a sleepover staple, though, a Cinderella story. Absolutely. I think I've seen this movie at least. 10 times. This was absolutely in the rotation of movies I would watch when I was sick. You mm. owned it on DVD. You brought the DVD. I brought the DVD. It the- was amazing. The, the I love previews before a DVD that really takes me back. Mm-hmm. And they were for... Um, Harry Potter. Harry Potter and nice. the Prisoner of Azkaban. Oh, great movie. Uh, Polar Express. Also a banger. And also only a reel of Chad Michael Murray on One, One Tree, Tree Hill. Hill. It was like a One Tree Hill, but they're like, okay, for this audience, just CMM. Oh my God. Speaking of Chad Michael Murray, I didn't realize until I was looking at like his discography while I was watching this, that he was the guy in Freaky Friday. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I did I not realize that. that. I have tea about this. Oh so, my God. Oh my the God. mean girl, the mean girl in this movie yeah. is also the mean girl in Freaky Friday. <gasps> oh my God, yeah. And so Chad Michael Murray and this mean girl who was her his girlfriend uh-huh. in this movie, so they are both in both films. Mm-hmm. And so there Are they was- couples in both films? I don't think so. No, I don't think they were. I don't think they were a couple in Freaky Friday. But there was a love triangle drama happening at the time between Lindsay Lohan, Hilary Duff, and Aaron Carter. And so the three of them were in a bit, like he had dated both of them, kind of a back and forth situation. Uh There was, there was drama. And so Chad Michael Murray invites Hillary Duff uh-huh. as his date to the Freaky Friday premiere. And so Ooh. Lindsay Lohan, the star, she sees who? This bitch she hates with her co-star. She's pissed. She throws a fit at the Freaky Friday mm-hmm. premiere. She is upset. And so what does Hillary Duff do? Post. So so um Freaky Friday came out first. Mm-hmm. A Cinderella story came out very shortly after. Mm-hmm. At the A Cinderella story premiere, Hillary Duff informs all of the PAs 
Lindsay Lohan is not to be on the premises and oh, bars her God. from the event. So she's like, if Lindsay Lohan even tries to show up, she is not allowed because there was this back and forth. Yeah. And so Chad Michael Murray kind of got brought into this love triangle mm-hmm. situation just because he was kind of like co-stars with both yeah. of them. And I don't know. And there he's was... fully like seven years older than both of them. So <laughs> gross. Yeah, so gross. She, um, Lindsay Like, why Lohan... are you even involved in yeah. this drama? Well, Hilary Duff at one point, like in interviews, was like, I had such a crush on him. And like, we, there was a, a bit of a, like, there was never a romantic entanglement, but there was certainly like a co-star flirtation mm-hmm. going. Yeah. And I'm like, that's fucking gross. Yeah. Really? He's 22. You're 15. Go date another 15 year old. Really? Go date. Who's the, the actor who plays the nerdy friend? Go date him, yeah, Hillary really. Duff. Or go date Gordo. I don't care. <laughs> but just, just yeah. anyone like age appropriate, please. But that was the, um, that was the mm-hmm. drama between mm-hmm. those two movies. Cause they came out within months of each other. They're yeah. very close in mm-hmm. time period, which is a big Chad Michael Murray peak because he he had the the like hot boy role if you had to pick one of the those movies though which one would you pick because that's a tough one. Oh, that is really i think i'd have to say freaky friday same it's, I it's, would too. it's strictly for jamie lee jamie curtis, lee curtis. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. jamie lee curtis and in Chad punk Michael. rocker girl clothes oh are you God. kidding me that hair and that outfit jamie yep. lee curtis in an activia commercial <laughs> <laughs> gets me worked up i don't know oh my God. <laughs> but yeah but that was oh that was God. like two, the 2004 drama with this mm-hmm. movie i'm eventually gonna make you two do true lies for jamie lee curtis oh she's so good okay i'm, I'm know, with that my my friend amy um this is a tangent I'm, i apologize no please but, we love to do a tangent we so love my, a tangent my parents love true lies um anytime it's on tv if it's on tnt or something like that true lies will be on mm-hmm. our television set because Good. it is it's one one of those movies where you can just jump into it at any point and it's enjoyable yeah. it's an early james cameron uh arnold schwarzenegger mm-hmm. jamie lee curtis movie it, it hell works. yeah <laughs> it across the board works so there's a scene where uh jamie lee curtis does this kind of striptease yeah <laughs> sexy i've seen it yeah i've never seen that movie mm-hmm. but i know what you're talking about yeah so my friend amy walks into the room she's coming to visit for the mm-hmm. weekend she sees that scene on this on the screen and she just drops everything <laughs> <laughs> See, out of bewilderment or out of excitement? out of of excitement. (laughs) I just know that one scene from, I couldn't even say what movie. Jen, maybe you know it. It's it's Jamie Lee Curtis and it's John Travolta. And they're doing like, um, what is it? Uh, when they're, I can't. Yeah, like aerobics or whatever. And it's just, it's just Jamie Lee Curtis aggressively thrusting (laughs) in a leotard. And I was like, I need some time to think. That reaction gif. Perfect for it. You don't know what to say to the person you're texting. Jamie Lee Curtis is doing a little hip thrust and some yep. and some aerobics. Here. Exactly. Perfect. What else could you need? I, the name of that movie. I I couldn't tell you, but I, mean, I remember that. That certainly sticks out to me. I mean, you know the true lie scene that I'm talking about, right? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yet, yeah. Yeah. Amy, useless bisexual that she is, just drops everything. Do Fair you, enough. Do you think? That Jamie Lee Curtis could have played the Jennifer Coolidge role in this movie. Um, I, I wish that I could say yes, but I don't think so. I think the only person that could have played it was Jennifer mm-hmm. Coolidge. Character actress. I Jennifer think Coolidge. Yes. Jennifer Coolidge could have played opposite Arnold Schwarzenegger in True Lies. I think. Mm. I thought you were going to say Freaky Friday. I was no, like, no, that no, would have no, been no, a no, whirlwind. No. Oh, no, 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 no. No. I think it would have been a different take on the character, but this is not a True Lies yeah. uh, episode. This is a, yeah. a Cinderella story episode. Yeah, it's just something about how Jennifer Coolidge plays it. Like, she is, like, the worst character in this film, she's but she's my favorite. Yes. Absolutely. It's just something about how she um, delivers those lines. It's oh. just Jennifer. It's so Jennifer Coolidge. I, I she wrote, nails it. Out of these, like, illegible notes I took, half of them are me just transcribing her dialogue because mm-hmm. I couldn't fucking stop laughing she i dare to say that jennifer coolidge is the best character actress comedian Mm -hmm. comedic character Mm -hmm. actress of like this generation oh yeah i I mean not our generation but you know of that time frame because it's just everything she's in is kind of that same like you think about her in legally blonde Mm -hmm. kind of Mm -hmm. you know that that same not always necessarily the same character but that same jennifer coolidge yeah. vibe about she, it she always puts her her personal spin on it oh and it's so it's good it's so it's so good i cannot mm-hmm. i can't this i think this movie would be nothing without her yeah i totally agree she's the villain this movie needs exactly anybody else i don't think it would have worked Mm-mm. just something about what is it 
Droughts are for poor people. You think J-Lo has the brown lawn? I need the voice. You need exactly. that voice. I know. I hope I, did her, I hope I did yeah, her some no, justice. No, you so did. You I love it. Yep. And then they zoom out of their house and everyone around them has a dead yard except for them. And they have blossoming palm trees in a yard. <laughs> oh, my God. And when she says that the salmon is from Norwegian... <laughs> I fully, I fully had to, like, remove myself from the room. <laughs> it's from Norwegia. And she's on the salmon diet the whole mm-hmm. movie, and she's constantly eating salmon. What? Why? I don't, I don't know, but I love it. Mm-hmm. It's so good. It's so good. And, and then her and, like, the two kind of kooky stepdaughters who, like, never really contribute much, but are no. just kind of there. It's mm-hmm. so, I think that that is what ties this movie the strongest yeah. to the Cinderella <laughs> plot Arc. yeah plot yeah, lines that they're trying to retell is because like a lot of it strays kind of left and right elsewhere because mm-hmm. you've got the big montage of her getting her cinderella moment yeah. like the dress the ride the boy should we give a quick i mean i feel like if you, if you if you've made it this far i'm assuming that you've seen the movie or you at least know like cinderella she, yeah. she's kind of comes from rags rags, rags, rags to riches, riches. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. she's in, but this time it's in high school and it's in the california it's san antonio valley yeah, or san fernando valley so, yeah, yeah yeah in california a lot of serial killers in there at this time in 2004 no, in the just 70s. General, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is Hillary Duff at risk? Because I got, I got to go protect her. I mean, you know, Chad it, Michael Murray won't. He well, can't recognize it, her. It was, was really play Ted Bundy in a movie. That's Are crazy to me. That's Jesus. fucking crazy to me. You told me this earlier. Chad Michael Murray with his cute little button nose <laughs> is gonna be fucking Ted Bundy. How in the goddamn is he gonna pull well, that off? Zac Efron did it, so well, you need how, kind of the dueling. Well, did he do it? Or did did he star as Ted Bundy in a film? Because I don't think he well, did it. I just want to know how I many movies, think. how many Ted Bundy movies does there need to be? You know what I mean? None. Yeah, exactly. no, it's zero. None. Exactly. He got, he got convicted and he got executed. Exactly. Can we end it there? Please? There's already too many young girls who like kind of romanticize him, and oh. I'm like, he's a gay man who murdered people. That's Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, yeah, oh, no. that's Jeffrey Dahmer. I was gonna say, I was yeah. like, he was gay. Uh, no, he wasn't. He was yeah. he was pretty uh, firmly heterosexual. Yeah. Oh, he did exclusively was, kill women. I, yeah. No, I was thinking yeah. of Jeffrey Dahmer who who only killed men. But there's also too many movies about him too. There people romanticize, yeah. romanticize Jeffrey Dahmer too, and I'm mm-hmm. like, no. Yeah. No to that. Jeffrey so got eight people as well. Yeah. So he had the cannibalism yeah. angle. That's an that's an added yeah. layer onto his. Like hey. I get it. Ross Lynch played him, but that doesn't mean you get to romanticize him. You can just think Ross Lynch is hot. Uh, I mean Austin and Allie, I can't unsee it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it Teen Beach movie? Teen Beach movie. <laughs> from Teen Beach movie to Jeffrey Dahmer, I don't know about that casting. Also, from a Cinderella story, eight One Tree Hill to Tad Bundy. Hey, uh, high school musical to I, see, that didn't work either. It just, didn't, it just doesn't work for me. Mm-hmm. But Chad Michael Murray is really an interesting character because he, so he had this like nice little acting stint in the early 2000s where he was the kind of it boy, you know, like mm-hmm. tough yeah. exterior, but with a soft heart. And he's mm-hmm. sensitive. He knows how to yeah. read. Definitely like on every cover of like Tiger Beat type oh, thing. Oh, for sure. But so I had this interesting experience not that long ago at my oh. work where <laughs> I was. You sh- met Chad Michael Murray. Oh my God! If Chad <laughs> he Michael- came into the library and Chad- said, "Hey, Dara." Oh my God! If Chad Michael Murray came into the library, I would have to excuse. I would say, <laughs> "Gina, I need you to take this patron because I need to go leave. I need to go take a breather in the stairwell." Are you kidding me? But he was. I was um, shelving books as I as I do, mm-hmm. and I come across this book. And it was by Heather Graham, who's a kind of a notable, like, romance thriller, mystery kind of author. Like, she's got a bunch of books, very Mm -hmm. popular with the older Mm mom-type lady crowd. And it was, like, Heather Graham and Chad Michael Murray (laughs) as the authors. And I I was like, that's really a funny coincidence that this co-author has the same name as Young Teen Very specific man name. And then I look at the back of the the author section, and it was fucking him. And he co-wrote this, like, romance thriller novel with this lady. And I was like, Chad, you you contain multitudes. I know. It, it was so good. And you were the sensitive author, football player all along. Honestly, yeah. Oh my god. He really fulfilled his character's yeah. dream. He, he went to Princeton mm-hmm. and he co-wrote a book. <laughs> but so I, I just thought that was really funny. That was my my most recent brush with CMM as a <laughs> as a character. My <laughs> most recent brush brush with him was on this t- short-lived TV show Agent Carter about mm. Agent Peggy Carter mm. uh, of Marvel, uh, Marvel, Marvel fame, Captain yeah. America fame and he was the uh, sexist 
pre-Shield Shield agent. Which it wasn't I, Shield yet. I cannot mm. picture him as like a dislikable guy. Look at his face. He's so cute. <laughs> and the thing is, <laughs> looks like a guinea pig. <laughs> like for most of the time, he wasn't. He looks like himself with a slightly more mature haircut. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He's in a suit. He looks good. Mm-hmm. But occasionally he'll say something to Peggy, who we're, you know, supposed to support and yeah. root for. Mm-hmm. He'll be like, no man will ever respect you. And you're like, oh my god, this is the 1940s. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Chad, go back to the 90s. I liked you better in I high school. I you better in the 90s, in the early 2000s, when you were, you know, a sensitive uh, football player who quoted Tennyson. I, I have to say, though, in this movie... I don't like him. I don't like. I don't like this character. Mm -mm. And I feel like even I can't speak for myself as a child because my memories of this movie basically only consist of like being like, "Wow, isn't Hilary Duff the most beautiful woman to ever exist?" (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know. But but I I never feel like I had quite a connection with his romance lead in this because I was obsessed with the comic relief characters in this movie. I don't remember the main plot as a child. Mm -hmm. I remember. Jennifer Coolidge. Jennifer Coolidge and the sign falling onto the car. And the friend. Yeah. 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 No, but him as a romance, like a romantic lead, a romantic interest, I fucking hated it. Even as this watch, I was like, get out of here, Hilary Duff. Mm -hmm. Go with the guy from Big Bang Theory who's dressed as the guy from The Matrix because he is better. He's better for you than fucking Mm -hmm. Chad Michael Murray. I would have gone with Matrix Bro. I mean, I... Keanu Reeves. Any day. Yeah. Yeah, right. But she... Oh my god. I hated him. I hated him. First of all, he chooses to dump his girlfriend the day of the homecoming. That's so shitty. So mm-hmm. shitty. And he's like, I'm actually in love with this girl I've been emailing, which is like, okay, speak your truth You're or whatever. You're having an emotional affair as a teenager. But I'm like, speak your truth, but like, don't wait to do it until the yeah, day right. of, you asshole. To be fair, he did offer to do it in private. And she was like, nope, you can, you can do it in front of but our he, friends. But he's been flirtatiously emailing and uh-huh. texting yeah. this girl for God knows how long. I feel bad for the girlfriend, One to be month. honest. She says one month they've been talking. Mm. Oh, God. I They made it seem like it had been years. No, yeah. no, no. It was one month. She said, um, the comic relief friend was like, you've been texting this guy for a whole month. You know oh, him. Oh, oh no. <laughs> and she's like, sometimes we even email. Like they, <gasps> <laughs> But I, I just didn't get it. I, I was didn't... like, I, I, I thought he was an asshole. I thought he was shallow. I thought he was I, a shit to his girlfriend. Here's the thing. I thought he was stupid. I thought he was. I don't know how he got into Princeton when he literally. Here's the thing. He quoted Tennyson at them, and that was enough. Here's the thing: is Hillary Duff is in not even anything of a mask, and he can't, for the life of him, figure out who this woman is. He's staring at. I. It's like it was like he. She was wearing like one of those CIA regulated masks, (laughs) and it's like a whole rubber face that you put on, and he's like, "Who are you?" you? Like she. He can't even. He hears her voice, and then literally five hours before the dance, he's mm-hmm. at the diner, and he's listening to it, and he can't put two and two She's together. She's the only yeah. girl with choppy blonde bangs in the whole goddamn she school. She curled her hair. She curled and her hair. And really threw him off. Yeah. Really threw him for a loop. And she had boobs instead of a t-shirt. <laughs> oh, she wasn't so tomboyish. Oh my god, now I have in my notes, I say, I am personally contacting Princeton University <laughs> to report on Austin Ames's poor problem-solving skills. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot deal with him being like, okay, first of all, this plan is shit. Let's meet in the middle of the dance floor at the dance. Where everybody else Where- in the dance is going to be. Right, you know? and I've never met you in my life, so let's just meet mm-hmm. up there while everyone will be in costume. You fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm and not yeah. going to pretend to understand how blind dates work, but... <laughs> I feel like that's not the that's way they not, should go. Everybody yeah, was no. in the middle of the dance floor <laughs> at midnight or whatever it was. Also, what kind of high school dance goes until midnight? <laughs> yeah. we, we were out of there at 10, 10 o'clock, o'clock sharp. Yeah. It started at, like, 7. It was also, like, at a function hall yeah. that had a bar. Wait, ours was in our sweaty gym with uh-huh. some free DJ yep. who was in the 10th grade. Every- yeah. Everyone's ours was she- at a venue. Ours was at Your a venue. homecoming? No, 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 no. Our, this is our prom. prom. This, this was, was our prom. This wasn't yeah. even the prom. No, it was no. the mm-hmm. Halloween homecoming dance, which mm-hmm. may I add... I, I'm no expert. Homecoming. Homecoming sep- marks September. The, the first football game yep. of the year, uh-huh. which is... In September. Yeah. October? October 31st? Are you kidding me? Halloween is out of the picture. <laughs> is all I have to say. 
Well, just, during the pandemic, they had to push the, <laughs> the sports season off another month. I don't know. This movie was in 2000. What fucking pandemic? There's a 2004, bitch. The pandemic and, of all the kids suddenly had cell phones. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> really. Look, okay, I have to say the most iconic thing in this movie is Lindsay Lohan typing LOL. Lindsay on her Lohan? Oh my god, oh no, my Lindsay god. Lohan. Hillary Duff. I'm sorry. Uh, they're, and they're interchangeable. She's going to be really offended if she ever hears this. No, one's this. a blonde and one's a, a fake redhead. Redhead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Lindsay. Hillary, if you want to get on the pod, duke out your beef, get Aaron Carter on here too. I would love to mediate this discussion, personally, truthfully, honestly. Chad Michael Murray, you too, I'd love to talk about your book as See, well. See, here's the thing, is we're missing the most important person, Jennifer, Jennifer Coolidge. Jennifer Coolidge! Coolidge I will, please! I will rename this to the Coolidge cast, and we will <gasps> we will only cover Jennifer Coolidge movies from here on out if you if you zoom in, and, and please, please contribute just a moment of your time. It's all I could ever want. Just say hi to us. Well, yeah. Oh, she types out LOL, and then she says to herself, <laughs> laughing out loud oh, no. <laughs> on her flip phone. The, the flip phone, the flip phone <laughs> presence in this movie, I, outstanding. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's everywhere. I really do love that she put her flip phone on, on her the shoe. straps of her shoe. Which, I do think that was pretty iconic. As a certified old millennial, I can tell you, I never did that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, did you ever wear strappy lace-up heels? No, I was a teenager. I wore flats. So I was, still wear flats. I'm currently wearing flats. So was H. Duff. H. Duff was 15. She was. She was. She in, was living a very different life than I was. <laughs> she was in Regina King's unpromptedly bought wedding dress that fit her perfectly. I was. Gonna, that's. What, oh my! God, I had that written in my notes. I was like, they took a massive gamble leaving the Halloween store without a backup plan. Dude, Regina King was like, no, I've got it, and I know it's going to fit you. <laughs> this wedding dress I bought with zero wedding in the upcoming future. Also, it's implied she's been divorced multiple times, or what? left at the altar. But she, but she said, this is the one I bought for the next time. What kind of woman gives a 50, well, she'd probably be like 16 in this movie, a 16-year-old a wedding dress her wedding dress that she's planning on wearing to bring to a dance. Do you know what a high school dance is like? She wears it in the diner. That shit should be nasty. She wears it outside. She walks Uh outside. It's been raining. She's in the dirt. She runs away through a field. Oh my god. Everyone's sweaty in that dance hall. There's probably punch all over the The place. The The blue, the electric, the blue curacao. The blue curacao punch. No chance. I I can't. Oh, they were drinking Capri Sun. This is a good Christian school. (laughs) I'm just saying it was so blue, there had to, there just had to be a little Mm -hmm. something It would have been filthy. No, it was, it was Kool-Aid. It was definitely Mm -hmm. Kool-Aid. I love also another iconic moment of dialogue was when the, the, um, Chad Michael Murray's girlfriend, who's kind of the mean girl character, Uh as Hilary Duff walks down the stairs Mm -hmm. and has her big moment, she goes, ugh, love that dress. Hate Hate her. her. Which even, what's her name? Jessica? I don't know. Even that bitch can identify Shelby. Her name is Shelby? Sheila? Shelby? I don't know. I think it was Shelby. I think it was Shelby. Shelby Cummings. Yeah, yep. (laughs) She can identify who Hillary Duff is Uh in that dress. If she says, love that dress, hate her, she knows knows who who that is. is. Chad Michael Murray? Not a clue. Do you think he just needed, like, contacts? Do you think he was just, like, super blind and he didn't... He couldn't be. He's the star quarterback. <laughs> yeah, right. He just needs glasses. And just, this is his diagnosis. <laughs> Look, the, the terrible uh, Blake Lively, uh, Ryan Reynolds project, uh, Green Lantern, makes this joke. You think I couldn't recognize you because I couldn't see your cheekbones? <laughs> yeah. Hillary Duff, a- you think I couldn't see those bangs, you idiot? What I'll- can you do? Everyone in this movie is Context. blonde. She curled her I hair. I was going to say, I was like, how do you feel about this movie as someone that is vehemently against blonde adults and they're not quite adults but still no but a blonde on blonde couple rubs me the wrong way and i'm sorry if that's you out there and i hope i hope to god that the two of you have distinguished enough features that you don't look like siblings if you told me chad michael murray was cast as hillary duff's older brother in this movie i'd believe you in a second the two of them they could be cast as as twins Mm -hmm. as siblings i'd believe you don't put fucking blonde people together. It's just, you know what the statistics of blonde people are? They only make up, like, less than 10% of the population. Really? 
Is that a fact? Yeah, because most blondes are fake. No. <laughs> just, just, just assuming they're natural blondes. Just, yeah, natural, no, natural blondes. Most blondes are fake blondes. Natural blondes are pretty rare. Just, Here's the thing. Jen's shaking her head, and I believe Jen over anything any of us on the, that's hosting this All says. I have to say is I've never seen a blonde couple that I didn't think, Siblings? It's like, there's like that Instagram account and it's like, is it a couple or is it siblings? Yeah. And you can do that with any blonde couple blonde at couple. all. Just like, blonde couples. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They look a lot alike. <laughs> they could look so the one They're both blonde. They look a lot alike. <laughs> no, look at the, tell me John Michael Murray cast as Hilary Duff's brother and you don't find that a little bit believable. I believe it. I believe anybody has siblings in a movie. Like, they just throw two random people together. I'm like, yep. Oh, okay. You know what I thought the casting was great for, though, is the um, the people redheaded the, the redheaded daughter as Jennifer Coolidge's daughter. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. The, the, the two daughters, there was the one tall, lanky one, and there was the one shorter, mm-hmm. redhead one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I thought the shorter, redheaded one was a, was a definite, like, that, that was a really good mm-hmm. Jennifer Coolidge offspring edit. What's, hey, Jen's making a face. What's the fucking statistic for blonde adults? In the world? In America. In oh, the- sorry. Was it? Wait, no, no, no. What's in the world, though? Re- in the world is 2%. <laughs> in the world is 2%. Natural blondes, might I add. Jesus. I'm guessing the statistics for redheads are much lower. Yes, no. And- I'm sure it's like 0.02%. Our, my whole family is full of redheads. If two redheads get together, that's even more <laughs> fucked up. Okay. You No, the, your bloodlines have to be crossed. If you have a kid, it's going to be a little messed up because you are at least second cousins if you're oh both God. redheads. Oh, my God. No, if you're from the same state, if you're both from Massachusetts and you're both redheads, come on. You're at least a little yeah, bit you related. Yeah, should, you should get blood work done at that Before point. you have yeah, kids. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm saying if you're from the same area and you're both redheaded, like... It's a little fishy. You should be worried before producing children. 16% in the U.S. Yeah, 16. 16. 16. That's blondes in the U.S.? Yeah. Huh. I wasn't that far off. I'm talking out my ass, but sometimes I'm a little bit right. Blonde people, I mean, yeah. you can be together and I hope you're happy, but when I see you on the street, I think, ooh, that's a little incesty, huh? <laughs> oh, God. That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, but something crazy about this movie that um, Jen, our intern, brought up was that Rupert Grint, a.k.a. Ron Weasley, uh-huh. from Harry Potter, was supposed to be... Coincidentally a redhead. Coincidentally a redhead. Uh-huh. That's why I'm, I'm looping it in. I'm tying uh-huh. it in. Was supposed to be the Austin Ames character. No he was way. cast. Oh my god. He was cast, but then his Harry but... Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban schedule got a little conflicted, and so he had to drop the project, and that's when they picked up Chad I, Michael I, I have a, qu- a couple of questions uh-huh. about this. Okay. Ah. So... I, have, I don't have any The answers. type of character <laughs> that Chad Michael Murray would be cast as, and the type of character... You know, I love him, but Rupert Grint would be cast as. Very different people. Like, is there a Venn diagram where the two circles are overlapping? I think they would have leaned a little more into the soft, artistic boy. Could you imagine Rupert... So he wouldn't have been a football player. Maybe he would have played soccer. Could you imagine (laughs) Rupert Grint as, like, the star football player? Not even a little bit. No, I can't even picture him as an American. (laughs) I will say, um, so I guess this movie probably wasn't super well developed, uh, because it's not. Uh, it's even a, in its final it's form, it's not a modern Cinderella story. It, like that's the the, the beginning and the end of it. In the mm-hmm. in the you know the screen read, Chad Michael Murray was the one who brought up, "What if my character has some conflict with his dad?" That Ooh. seems a sporty a sporty guy trying to be artsy. This mm. seems like a daddy issue, and that's when they wrote that in. So, mm. so the whole "it's your dream, dad, not mine" like that was all Chad Michael Murray's idea, which is so basic and lame. But uh, ultimately, because it's so unusual to have daddy issues in a movie. My God, what a concept! <laughs> Never been done before. But Never. I, this I is feel groundbreaking like, work right here. It's not like the yeah. Austin Ames character clearly wasn't super well written or developed to begin with. So I'm sure if they got Rupert Grant on the project, they would have just twisted it a different way. Yeah. You know. I definitely think you're right to say he would he would have played soccer. He, <laughs> yeah, he seems more of a soccer guy than a football yeah. guy. I tried to think of a sport that wasn't football, and the the movie already had baseball cornered yeah, yeah. with you know the main characters, yeah. dead fathers. Was yeah. she? Did she even play on a team though? Was nope. she even no. like on the softball no. team? No, she just tormented her nerd friend. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that was never. Cage. She didn't go to therapy. She just went out and like hit some oh softballs. God. I mean, whatever works for you, H stuff. But I don't get that they're like her mom died at, uh, supposedly at infancy. She never yeah. knew her mom is like mm-hmm. the thing. So she is not like most girls. She's a little tomboyish because she doesn't have a mom, mm-hmm. which means that she was raised by her dad. So she's inherently a tomboy. Yep. Here's the yep. problem with all of these movies. 
all of the popular girls at my high school played sports. They oh, all yeah. Played, they all yep. did soccer. They every all did lacrosse. One. They all did something. Track, yeah. whatever. They were, like, triple athletes. They played yeah. one, like, every season. Every you know season, what I mean? exactly, yeah. Like, if so. they weren't playing, then you're like, something's off here. Yeah. <laughs> like, the tomboys were the popular girls. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, no, yeah, being, being good at a sport isn't inherently unfeminine. I don't no. know why. This movie makes no sense either because, I mean, okay, Hilary Duff is Hollywood hot. <laughs> Yep. She's not going to be unpopular. Everyone's like, you ugly bitch who has a job. You're a, you're a disgrace. Wait. You're a bus girl. I want to bring something up because this bothered me throughout the entire movie. Uh-huh. They have this one nickname for her and they call her Diner, Diner girl? girl. And that's the most creative thing they could come up with. That she has a job? Yeah. Diner you know, do you girl, have jobs? Diner. Do you know how ruthless high schoolers are and how mean high schoolers are? I would think that they could have been a little more creative and Bow-legged come up with- legged ass orphan ass fucking bitch <laughs> that, see that was better just then and, and you know who else has a job just chad michael murray has a job in yeah. the movie austin Ames has a they could he works for his dad though they, but they don't call him car wash boy <laughs> yeah right she works for her stepmom she, it's, her, true, it's true, still true. family business they don't call him yeah. car wash boy their their whole their biggest insult to yeah. her is that you are employed yeah as a like teenager, what? imagine if everyone in high school you called them what they what their part time job was. Yeah. Hey, ice cream scooper. <laughs> hey, pee pod, whatever. whatever <laughs> pod, I don't know. Hey, checkout girl at the grocery yeah, right? store. Go bag my groceries. You could have at least called her like a grease monger if she's working in like a yeah, freaking diner or something smart like that. Enough to think of a word like monger. <laughs> or just, just like just throw in the word bitch. You yeah. know what I mean? Hey, diner bitch. That's better. <laughs> exactly. I mean, this is a PG movie. They couldn't call it that. <laughs> But yeah, I you know this. I'm like, you're making fun of her for, ha- and every time they go into the diner as patrons, they're like, ah, we're not tipping you, you dumb bitch. We're not even gonna buy anything because we're too skinny. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. I hate that. I hate that. And then Chad Michael Murray when they're playing twenty questions mm-hmm. in, in order to w- mm-hmm. bond. I don't know. Yeah. He's like, would mm-hmm. you rather have a rice cake or a Big Mac? And she's like, a Big Mac, <laughs> a Big of Mac. course. I'm like, is gonna pick a rice cake. Hey, half the girls at the high school. Cle- clearly, clearly, he likes a girl. He singled him out. He's like, I, he's like, I like a girl who, with an appetite. <laughs> what? The, what the fuck? What the fuck kind of question? It'd be like, oh, like chicken tenders or a Big Mac. I don't know. Come, so, be at least somewhat comfortable. Here's the thing: is these are really good questions for yeah. These are really good questions for chocolate or vanilla. Okay, okay. Jen. Oh my god, Jen, okay. we want to segue so beautifully. Beautiful. Uh, there was out. a laxative joke in there that rubbed me the wrong way that I did not pick up as a kid. But a I laxative joke? Oh, yeah. What, about, like, weight loss? Yeah, yeah there was, like, one girl, one girl, they were, like, some girl mm-hmm. was asking about menu, like, items on the menu, and they're like, uh, they don't serve laxatives at the diner or something, or laxatives don't count as a food group, Jen, or yeah. whatever. I, did, I didn't get that one, but... Yeah, it was it some has some been, like shit. a very long time since the last time I saw this movie. Yeah, which that like, that just felt like not something to put into a kids movie. Also, you know okay, what I mean? There was like a weird subtext moment between a student and a teacher that we uh, all picked up. That it was like this: the principal comes up and she's like mad at the boys for doing whatever, and then she's like, "Hey, Ryan, or whatever his name is." And then he's like, <laughs> "Like, what is this flirtatious subtext uh, moment between the principal and a student? Is this like a for the adults joke?" Because mm-hmm. I. I'm not fucking laughing. Mm. Anyway, here's Jen with chocolate and vanilla bringing us the hit segment game where we decide between two things. It's an opinion game. Jen invented it from her brain. It You say two things, you say which one you like better. Uh-huh. Jen, take it away. Okay. So we're going to go Aaron, Dara, oh Emily, God, me. Oh, God. Put me first. first. Oh, I don't, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so what, is there a theme? The theme is kind of this movie. Good. Okay. Very good. All righty. Um, and Cinderella based things. Okay, okay, I like this. So, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Chocolate. Vanilla. Chocolate. Okay. 1998 live action Cinderella with Drew Barrymore or 2015 live action Cinderella with Lily James? Drew Barrymore. Uh, see, I'm going to say the, the 2015 one because I, I, Helena Boehm Carter, amazing. I thought the costumes were beautiful mm-hmm. and I just thought visually it was really nice. It's the only live action Disney remake movie that I really think I stand by as being like a, a joy to watch. Richard Madden is also really hot. Yeah. Richard Madden is super hot, um, but I'm, I'm a 90s kid. So yeah, I I'm also going to go with yeah. Drew Barrymore. 
I'm going to go with Lily James. We mm. saw it in one of those movie theaters with like the really nice seats. The big recliner Ooh, chairs. Yeah. It was a great experience. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. She's beautiful as well, but again, mm-hmm. you know, 90s yeah. character Hers, very more. Pamela Anderson coming up. Oh my up. god, that right. eye makeup was like... Her was... tits are up to her neck. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways. I love her. <laughs> Not as convinced by Sebastian Stan as Tommy Lee. Yeah, but I like. I think he got his nipples fully pierced yeah. for the role, so I really respect it. Yeah, I got to give him that. But. Do you think Jennifer Coolidge got her lips injected for this role? By the way, I think she just had she those. Had that. She looks like that in every movie. Like she's just kind of a silly looking human. Also, I I think you would be amazed with the power of like lip glosses and lip liners. liners. You could yeah. make me look like I had like. You could look lips. like Jennifer yeah. Coolidge. Yeah, <laughs> we should do that. We should. Yeah, I I want. You should look. be Jennifer Coolidge for Halloween. Oh, there is probably a YouTube tutorial for that exact. Thing. With the, I want the, I want to be the legally blonde though one with the high yes, scrunchy yes. pony, and uh-huh. I'm just gonna say I'm taking the dog. <laughs> You've got a little dog, <laughs> yeah, that you give to somebody, and then you immediately take. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Hillary Duff as Sam or Hillary Duff as Lizzie McGuire. I didn't watch Lizzie McGuire, so I'm gonna have to say Lizzie. Uh, yeah, Hillary Duff as Sam. Because... Not only am I going to say Lizzie or Lizzie McGuire, I'm, but. Lizzie McGuire playing a twin of herself mm. in the Lizzie McGuire movie where they go to Spain and then she says, sing to me, Paolo, and they expose his ass and then they sing together. Twin, blonde, brunette moment. If anyone out there wants to do a dual Halloween costume with me where we are, what's her name, Isabella and Lizzie McGuire together, I think that would be a moment and that's my answer. Hannah Montana could never. She mm-hmm. couldn't. No, because she was just the same person. Yeah, I, I was never a big Lizzie McGuire watcher either, so I'm going to say Hillary Duff as Sam. Right, I'm going to say as Sam, too. Uh, Chad Michael Murray as Austin Ames in this, or as Lucas Scott in One Tree Hill? Again, I didn't see One Tree Hill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me neither. Jen's, 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 making, a, yeah, Jen's making a shocked yeah. face. The three of us have never nope, seen One Tree Hill. So I'm going to go with him in this. Yeah, i got to say Austin Ames. Yeah, I was watching Supernatural at the time. One Tree Hill was not my, on my radar. Mm-hmm. On yeah, my radar yeah, no. at all. I needed ghosts with my hot yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, so it didn't work. I'll go with One Tree Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, Gus or Jack-Jack? From the real, from the original Cinderella. Oh, the oh my! Okay. Yeah, oh, the nice. Nice. Oh, Gus. I Who was the fat Gus. one? Yeah. Gus. I Gus. Gus. Yeah, Gus. Short for Augustus. Yeah, the oh. little chunky boy. We gotta go with him. That'd be um, a good cat name. Cat named Gus. <laughs> Gus. <laughs> Gus for me too. The cat there was named Lucifer, and I loved yeah, him. So mm. good. He was also fat, and I loved him. Mm. I also, I mean, like totally off the cuff, uh, off off topic, but um, Cinderella two was we had on VCR tape and I watched it frequently and it had little side stories about the evil twin sisters who turned out to not be evil really so much at all. It's more than they were just like insecure about being kind of ugly. And it was like one of them meets a baker who's really nice to her and yeah. like tells her that she's beautiful and she's like, nobody's ever told me that I'm beautiful and it was really nice. And it was like the, the twi- like, you know, it's different little plot lines for all the characters basically, but it was a Cinderella 2. I didn't know there was a Cinderella 2. Yeah, it, I think it was straight to VHS. No. Like it never was in yeah. theaters or anything, but it was about kind of the sisters had their nice little plot line That's where you cute. learn more about them and they're not really so bad. But so nice. that was, They were just I, raised bad. Yeah. yeah, I just remember watching that one a lot as a kid. Mm-hmm. It was it was it was very nice. It was a good one. Okay, um, Selena Gomez or Lucy Hale? <sighs> Crap! I know nothing about Lucy Hale, so I'm gonna have to say Selena Gomez mm-hmm. just because I saw Wizards of Waverly Place. This seems like a hard one for you. <laughs> it is a hard one for me because. We got to keep an eye out for Selena, but also Lucy Hale was the title of my first goldfish, and I predicted <laughs> not, not the, not the, the name, title. The title. It was the title of my goldfish, and I predicted Lucy Hale's fame because she was on American Idol Junior. And I oh, said, we've talked about. I said she is a star, and I named my goldfish after her. And what did I know? And she was a star. Right. Now I was a white, <laughs> but I must mention Selena Gomez's most recent Vogue shoot. Mm. So good. Knocked hmm. me, knocked my socks off. Also, check it out. she has lupus. That we got to take into consideration. <laughs> she, she's a, she's a spokeswoman, and so she's a spokeswoman for lupus. Yeah, she has. You know how you know how Nick Jonas has diabetes. Yeah. Oh, I remember thinking that he was gonna die every day when I was like eight years old. I was like, the diabetes is gonna get to him. <laughs> But they also made us think that Selena Gomez was going to die from lupus. Uh, but so she she didn't, and she's okay, but I am going to say Lucy Hale because Damn. she Damn. dated her English teacher in Pretty Little Liars, and isn't that a goal for all of us? Um, I'm going to go first. No, no, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I, no I'm sorry. Not. No, it, no, I just, 
But yeah. that was like every high school okay. girl's yeah. like want. Fantasy, yeah. yeah. Um. So I'm just gonna go with Selena because. <laughs> I really liked her in another Cinderella story, and she could not dance, but at the time, I was like, this is peak. I'll take Selena. <laughs> <laughs> I like that we get full like, yeah. explanations like, as to why we're I choosing these. This. Yeah. And then Jen's like, I, I do. Well, Selena. So part of chocolate or vanilla is you have to, you have to fight your stance. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jennifer Coolidge in this, or Jennifer Coolidge in Legally Blonde? Fuck! Oh my god. Oh god. I... Hmm. She, I like her character better in Legally Blonde, but does she entertain me as much? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I think she's... What do you value more, though? Is mm, the good character or the entertainment value? I like... Mm, I think, you know, her relationship with Re- Reese Witherspoon, she gets her confidence. She, <laughs> you know, she gets the hot... UPS, UPS guy. guy! She gets mm-hmm. the hot UPS guy, and that's just mm-hmm. gold, yeah. you know? But I think she's very entertaining as this cartoonish, awful yeah. step parent. Mm-hmm. Well, she's she's amazing in both. Yeah. It's undeniable. Yeah. This is one of your hardest questions. This is a hard date. question. Yeah. yeah, it should go down in the history books. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come down. Like I love a good villain because yeah, she's just got some good awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. sociopathic lines in this yeah. movie about, you know, killing the environment and enslaving mm-hmm. her stepdaughter. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to say... It's a stance. Know, yeah. So I'm going to say her character yeah. in uh, in the Cinderella story just because she's, she's funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you do a Jennifer Coolidge UPS guy Halloween costume, oh, so that good. would be the most epic mm-hmm. thing you and henry ever. have to do this that now. would be so oh good if henry and i have anywhere to go on halloween the last time we had somewhere to be on halloween we like fought about our halloween costume and then i made him be guy fieri and i like made a whole outfit that was great that was... He, but he was like i'm gonna shave my beard and i was like no and then it was like a whole thing but so we were a hot dog and guy fieri to recreate I me mean. but so if somebody that wants was... to Probably one of my top ten favorite Halloween costumes anyone's ever done. Thank though. you. So if anybody in the Syracuse area wants to be my friend, I don't know anybody who lives there. So if you want to be my friend and you want to invite me to a Halloween party, I will show up in a banging costume one way or the other. But I think a, a Jennifer Coolidge yeah. uh, UPS, UPS guy would be good. really good. But I do have to say, her, her scene in this movie where she's wearing the little tanning goggles. Yes. And the, the, mm. the stepsisters say to Sam, oh, mom's at home baking. And then she's she in the, the tanning, tanning bed. bed. <laughs> oh my God, so good. And then she says, I want to have a talk with you. You're not very pretty and you're not very bright. <laughs> that that stuck with me like so oh my god that is that is yeah. the best deliverance of a line yeah. and her eating the cookie yep well so she gives moist, her the rejection <laughs> so moist oh my god Jennifer Coolidge in this yeah. movie is everything and so I, I, pick I, her. I agree we discussed this at the time but uh Hilary Duff's performance in that scene you know she does not break character. She's fully sobbing yeah. and distraught and destroyed while Jennifer Coolidge is just like... Chowing down. Hamming it up, eating a cookie. Yeah, yeah. You know. I think that... It deserved an Oscar. A yeah, lesser that's actor would have broken in that yeah. moment. See, I wonder how many takes it took. Ah, it would have taken one. me a hundred. No, I think for Jennifer... <laughs> No, one. for Hillary. <laughs> for Hillary? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hillary did not break. I would have cracked the fuck up. Yeah. 15 years old, giving the dramatic performance mm-hmm. of her life. Yeah, I think I think I have to agree with you both here. I think Jennifer Coolidge is just such a scene stealer in this whole movie that I've got to give it to her. And she's just a far yeah. more prominent character in this than in Legally Blonde. So I'm going to say, I think, she I gets, think her. She gets billed over Chad Michael Murray in this. Oh, she I hope, yeah. yeah. I, she should be top. To her, yeah. yeah. Jen, where do you stand? Um, I'm going to say in this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Um, I don't know if we've ever all said the same no. thing before. Woo. That was really great. Um, Regina King in this, or Regina King in Miss Congeniality? Miss Congeniality 2. What? Was, I think she was in both. Oh, but she's in both? Yeah. I don't remember Miss Congeniality. Um, yeah. I just remember that um, at the time, she thought that Miss Congeniality was going to be much uh, more prominent of a role for her. And when she was in public, people were like, hey, are you Rhonda? And she'd be like, who the fuck is Rhonda? And then she was like, oh, like that that diner uh-huh. character I played for that nothing movie. But like, it actually ended up having more of like a teen cult following. Yeah. So she got recognized way more on the street for being Rhonda. And she was like, what the hell? Like, I mm. thought, I didn't think this is the thing that I'm known for, you know? Mm. Yeah. But so what do you, what do you say? 
I'm gonna have to say this because I honestly don't remember yeah. Yeah. his congeniality uh, except I, for yeah. that scene where Miss Rhode Island is is nearly murdered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, which is the perfect day is like May 28th yeah. or something. Yeah. So good. Uh, but I would say her in this as well. I, yeah. I love her. I love her in this movie. She is. She's yeah. so good. She looks so young. Mm-hmm. She looks so baby. I like didn't remember her looking so mm-hmm. little in this movie. But I'm like, oh my god, like. Yeah. Regina King who? Yeah. yeah. I thought she was like when I first saw this movie, she's like, This is this woman is an adult. She's clearly like middle aged. But watching it now, I'm like, oh, she might be closer to my yeah, age. Yeah, she, yeah, she yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to say her in this because I just want her to hang out with her. I wanna sleep on her couch. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wanna wear her wedding dress yeah. to the homecoming uh-huh. dance. I want it to fit me perfectly for yeah. no it's justifiable like, reason. It's it's like the sisterhood of the traveling pants. Yes, it's type except thing. the wedding dress. Yeah. <laughs> Sisterhood of Regina King's wedding dress. <laughs> I would say this also. Uh-huh. Um, in general, ballroom dancing or tap dancing? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is going to sweep. I think we know what we're going to pick. Uh-huh. I, I don't dance. I can't dance. I refuse to dance. But if I'm going to watch, I prefer watching tap dancing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. to see a bitch bust mm-hmm. out a tap yeah. move. It's just some of the most impressive work. And the click clackety really yeah. makes my yeah. senses go. Yep. I like the A little ASMR on yeah. the dance floor. Uh-huh. Yeah. So. Also, another sweet tap dancing. Yep. Yep. Uh, original Cinderella in 1950 or Cinderella Dreams Come True in 2001? Hell yeah! <laughs> you still gotta go with the OG. Nobody but me has seen Cinderella 2. I was gonna say. If anybody out there has seen Cinderella 2 with all the little side stories about the, all the little side characters, please hit me up. I love that movie. Yeah, I have to say the original just because I haven't seen yeah. that. Well, I love a redemption arc, and <laughs> I love the idea of, you know, the, the, the ugly stepsisters coming into their own and realizing they don't need to put other people down in order to be beautiful. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it, so yeah. I'm going to have to pick the original. Yeah, Even- I still... I still gotta say the original's better. It just, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I just like threw my whiskey everywhere. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry, Jen. Oh, no. It's okay. It didn't even get on me. Oh, okay. This isn't cool. even her, her room. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We're moving soon. Who cares? <laughs> Glass slippers or Chuck Taylors? You've got me on a double edged sword here. <laughs> I gotta pick the discomfort of a glass slipper. Like, picture... I mean, you're in the profession of people who do terrible things to their limbs. Jen, can I get a little context for this? Is this with Hilary Duff's princess outfit? Just in general. You, personally. I do wear Chuck Taylors, so... I don't want to put my feet in glass. I've got messed up feet as it is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say... That on the cover of this film, Hilary Duff is wearing pink Chuck Taylors with her wedding gown. And I think that if you wear Converse to your wedding, that that's a choice for you. But it would not be a choice for me. I think we've talked about this before and, during our Twilight episode. Yeah, yeah it's, it's We're very like, much, fuck anyone who wears Converse to their wedding. It's very much like a, I'm not like the other girls, but I'm like, at least we're a sensible flat. Yeah. Come, like, oh my god. Or at Everybody least, wears Chuck Taylors. Everybody wears them. See, here's the thing is I also have to choose Chuck Taylors because I'm wearing them right now. Yeah, I would, for myself, <laughs> I own Chucks. I wear Chucks. I don't wear glass slippers. But if I was, wear, if I was a formal event and I was wearing a ball gown... Not in a hell no, am I wearing no. sneakers. They're it's gonna, just it's just not classy. It just I'm doesn't wear fit. the glass slippers and everybody's gonna see me bleed because <laughs> yeah. they're they're transparent. <laughs> uh, I'll also say chucks. <laughs> <laughs> and last one. Salmon or swordfish? Salmon or swordfish? <laughs> I can't say I've ever had swordfish. So, really? It just yeah. tastes kind of like chicken. It's the, most, it's the most amicable of fishes. I'm going to go with salmon just because i You need your omega-3s? Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> we, we just had salmon. I can't say we just had swordfish. Um, yeah. I don't know enough to know the difference. Mm. I, I know swordfish is white. I know it's what comes in the can, but I'm going to pick salmon. Yeah, I'd mm. say salmon in my sushi. I'll go salmon. I would say swordfish, and that's it. Well, I mean, this yeah. is good. Oh, wait, this can is, I, there can was a I lot throw of debate. A, uh, can I throw a, a last one? Oh, a bonus. Ooh, okay, nice. can I throw out a bonus one? So, Sam and Austin slow dancing in the gazebo in this Ooh. film, or Bella I and Edward it. slow dancing uh, in the gazebo in Twilight? This film, all day. 
Really, mm-hmm. Jess? I'm oh, seeing... with the three-piece impromptu string orchestra? No, think... no, no, no. Because here's the thing. is What is Edwin it? Isn't McCain, it... Edwin McCain, I'll be? Isn't it... Oh, Iron what... and Wine. Yeah, Flightless yep. Bird, American... Yep, yep. yep. I, see, they're dancing to that, and I just... I can't... That's what makes the scene for me. Nothing... Not Bella and her converse. Not him picking her up and twirling her around with her broken leg. <laughs> it's that song, and for that reason, I have to choose... Edward and Bella. And I have to say, so in this film, Chad Michael Murray brings Hilary Duff up to the gazebo where apparently a wedding has just taken place. <laughs> this event hall booked a, a high school ho- Halloween homecoming the same night as a wedding. Do you know how badly that could have gone? Right. So Disastrous. Both. But so the wedding has... has Hence happened, but the for some reason the string quartet has stuck around. Band still there, but yeah. there's a there's a violin, a guitar, and a tambourine, <laughs> and the three people are like, we'll stick around and give these kids their moment. But as the two of them are slow dancing, you just see in the off background just the girl hitting her tambourine. <laughs> Every couple of seconds, like kind of off beat, and I, I just really I love that that addition to this film. Mm-hmm. But I will say Edward and Bella um, in Twilight because mm-hmm. it's the moment. Mm-hmm. That is the moment. I have no idea what metric to base this on because which one made you feel oomph? Neither of them. <laughs> <laughs> You uh, loved Twilight. I mm-hmm. did love Twilight, but I loved this movie first. Mm. This movie came first. It did come first, so... You might even say that Twilight stole... Twilight was a... Or, um, yeah, Twilight I don't know when Twilight. Twilight the book came out, because that scene was fully in the book, uh, I true. think. I'm true. Not, don't quote me mm-hmm. on that. I don't remember... Mm. My memories of... My middle school experience are not crystal clear. Two mm. teens in a gazebo doesn't seem super... It's not original. the most original. Mm, yeah. So I don't remember the song that was playing in the Twilight scene. Oh, it's, it's, the, best, it's the best song of all Top song. notch. I don't know. Did it win our poll? Because we uh, did a it, poll. Yeah, I think it tied. So we got a tie between mm. the Muse song that happens during the baseball scene. Maybe we rerun, rerun that because I know we got a lot more followers since. And yeah. I, I need to know what... The top one. When we do New Moon, yeah, New we'll, Moon, we'll revisit the soundtrack okay. poll for sure. <laughs> okay, cool. We're gonna do. We have to do New okay, Moon. Okay, I'm gonna P- pick Twilight soon. after that deliberation. I'm gonna pick Twilight because it was actually their prom and it made sense. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah right. This is what the fuck is this Halloween homecoming? What? I I just don't get it. Uh, I don't know. I want to say <laughs> also. I think. That the twin sisters were robbed. Their Siamese twin dual <laughs> costume was fucking phenomenal. <laughs> and that you're gonna give the they award to... To, to fucking tights, Chad Michael Moore. I saw so Look. many good costumes mm-hmm. in that scene. There was somebody as a as a um not a whiteboard, a chalkboard. Somebody was a chalkboard yep. with their teacher's name at the top. So funny. Mm-hmm. The guy is the, the matrix, the matrix Neo from Matrix. So good. In the back. Were you the Matrix guy? <laughs> I was, this year, alone in my basement, I dressed up as a slutty version of Neo from The Matrix. It was a great costume. And it was really great because I bought a leather trench coat from the the Goodwill for like $6. Really? It came from Goodwill? Yep. Oh yeah, a fully, full leather trench coat. And that I was, was like, fantastic I saw it and I was coat. like, this is speaking to me. I can't not be Neo uh-huh. from The Matrix now. Yeah. I was also kind of a Trinity, the girl a little bit because I slicked my hair back. It was, yeah. isn't a bit of an amalgamation. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyways, I, I there were so many good costumes and you're just going to give it to fucking, what was she, she was supposed to be Cinderella with a mask on. Cinderella never wore a fucking mask. Mm-mm. What was Hilary Duff supposed Mm-mm. to be? Regina King's wedding outfit? That's not a costume. It was thrown together at the last minute. Yep. There were so many people who I bet had planned for months. That that dual Siamese outfit, yep. I bet had to be custom sewn. Probably. Oh, 100%. Those so. two are completely different heights. There's no way you got that in a custom fit. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. One of them had to be wearing platforms, I bet. The oh, coordination. Boy. I mean, they did fall down the stairs. It clearly wasn't easy. So, the execution left a bit to be desired. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, sure. I still loved it, though. Mm-hmm. It was so good. If they had uh-huh. done it like... Like Cats. Not the movie version of Cats, but the 80s film's musical mm-hmm. version of Cats where they were wearing, like, leg warmers and, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like, actual... But still as, like, the two-in-one yeah, moment? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, zhuzh yeah. it up a little bit. Make it mm-hmm. a little bit theater. I like that. hmm So what do we eat and what do we pair with this movie? Okay, so there are two obvious food yeah. situations. A. 
There's a diner. Yeah, they I was going to say diner. diner food. Eat something greasy in dinery. You know? I was really, I was order a, out. Order out from a friend. I, I was at a diner last night. Oh my god! What'd I you had, get? What'd you get? I got. I got. I. I came to a diner after I saw a show. Um, and so I got. I got a burger. And it, honestly, and this is gonna sound really lame, um, but I had the best coleslaw of my life at that diner. <laughs> very specific thing to me. Listen, I was blown away. I was genuinely blown away. By the coleslaw on this burger. Yes, yes. So, eat a a dang good coleslaw (laughs) with this movie. I'd say, probably, I I feel like the thing to do is make yourself some pancakes and some bacon and a hash brown. Yeah, diner food would be good. I feel feel like breakfast diner food is a good one. Just in, in retort... To, to your coleslaw comment yeah. <laughs> i just I, in, in certain contexts i don't mind a bit of coleslaw but i just who decided that salad should be wet i don't i don't know who, man who but was eating was, a salad and said this needs man this was this was the first coleslaw i ever had that had flavor to it you know oh, what i mean yeah. so it was, yeah i was blown away Int- yeah. yeah interesting mm-hmm. i usually am not a fan of coleslaw on like on like a fried chicken sandwich or like yeah. a pulled pork sandwich just, I mean, a side. just for the crunch I, I get it, yeah. but yeah, as a side, I would never straight eat coleslaw. That is for heathens. It was really good. I worked a, I worked a, um, like a uh, fry cook typey place. Yeah, right? fry cook typey place for like three years or something like that. And no one ever knew. Like, we would all like go around and we're like, "Does this taste right? Does this taste?" Because right? <laughs> no one actually liked coleslaw and no one like ate it. We're like, "I think this is fine." Just cabbage and mayo. Yeah, exactly. But now my 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 taste is so refined <laughs> after the after this life changing experience that I had last night. But. No, I'd say, I'd say probably your better option is to, like, make a stack of pancakes. Yeah, something that feels diner. Bacon. Or to me, s- salmon, if you're willing to take the risk, the big the big food item is that Jennifer Coolidge is on an only salmon diet. Walks on a bagel, maybe? Or, like, sushi, yeah, but, if you're gonna get, like, sushi and get salmon. I don't know. But what do you drink with salmon? Because I know if you, I feel like if you're having diner food and if you're doing it, like, sort you of breakfast. You a heavy drink, yeah. I, if you're doing it breakfast style, too. I'd say you could make yourself like a white Russian sort of thing and mm-hmm. go for like a coffee kind of vibe or whatever you're going for. That could work. Yeah, which I like. That's true. That is in this movie. I would mm-hmm. say, so what we're drinking while we're recording this, not necessarily while we're watching the movie, but we're drinking peanut butter and jellies, which yeah. uh, seem kind of like nostalgic and childhoody to mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. which is what this movie also invokes. So it's peanut butter whiskey with chambord. Mm-hmm. And then you, That's it. you even suggested a bit of Bailey's, which gives it kind of a like a creamy. creamy a bit, yeah, but yeah. The, those things, together I think could be kind of like a nostalgia yeah. moment so a PB and J kind of feels right with yeah. this movie. I feel like if you're and the thing that stuck out to me if you're having salmon I feel like the thing that you gotta have with it is like uh like a seltzer like be really basic and get like a white claw or something like that you yeah. know what I mean which I don't know something like, like a zero calorie because they they yeah. the big joke in this movie at one point is that um she's like what can I get at this diner that has zero fat zero sugar zero carbs and zero calories and she's like water, water. so like drink a zero calorie seltzer drink like one of those like a truly or something yeah i don't know which there is no zero be be a skinny legend i don't know but i don't know do you have any Any what would you you eat or drink with this as like a little pairing i'm a fan of diner food to be honest Mm -hmm. so yeah it is it is the thing that makes takes place the most in this yeah Yeah. i also like salmon but you know again Diner food, how much, salmon. How much can you do with yeah. salmon? Yeah. Like, how much easier is it to get diner food than salmon? Like, you can get mm-hmm. diner food. Yeah, get takeout or make your own. Yeah, like you said, pancakes, pretty mm-hmm. easy. Good stuff. I like to, like, you make bacon and then you chop it up and then you, like, you put, put it in, in the, the pancake. pancake like, yeah, bacon yeah. Bacon pancake moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that would be good. Mm-hmm. And then. For sure. What would you follow this movie up with? What would you What would you say next? This came pretty off the cuff right after I watched this movie, and I felt like I should follow it up with something that was around the same era and something that has the same kind of feel of it, a little princessy. And I said, "The Princess Diaries." Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Which I feel like could also like get entangled with because you have this book here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my oh my my answer comes from this great book. Erin brought a, a handful of books and she was like, "These are for the podcast." And I was really interested in this one specifically. It's called "Your Movie Sucks" by Roger Ebert. And it, for those who don't know, he is basically the head movie critic at the New York Times for like decades and decades he's dead mm-hmm. now but for decades and decades mm. he was like the the movie critic and he's mm. such an asshole and he gives everything bad ratings basically and he has no fun and he i mean not to speak ill of the dead but he he just was so mean and he would basically any movie that was like kind of 
stupid and fun he would just rip it apart mm-hmm. like he was one of those like purist kind of critic yeah. guys and i'm just like oh my god loosen up like let people mm-hmm. like things i don't mm-hmm. know and i just don't think anyone should you can't make your life talking shit about other people's yeah. movies mm-hmm. at least be fun about it yeah. jesus christ that's what we do <laughs> right well we're, i'm not making my living doing this that's for sure but he so well I, if if Hello Fresh wants to sponsor us. <laughs> Casper Mattress, yeah. if you're listening and, Adam and to, Eve. if you want to pay for my apartment, I will speak in this voice and talk about how much I love your product. <laughs> but um so you're the, getting into Shatner territory. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but so this this book is called Your Movie Sucks, and it's all of some of his like lowest critic movies like all the things he gave one star or zero stars and in here is this movie a cinderella story (laughs) which is not why i brought it i just grabbed it off my shelf because i had it from you know well thank god uh, you brought it it's i love it and so i I just want to do a little quote from his review because i thought it was so i just love this moment and he said um urgently counsel your mom and sister to forget about going to the movies this week to see a Cinderella story and instead mark the calendar for August 24th when Ella Enchanted will be released on video DVD hell yeah Roger Mm -hmm. Ebert because Ella Ella Enchanted slaps so hard and is also a retelling Mm -hmm. sort of situation Mm -hmm. about uh, uh, Cinderella so I think you follow this up with either Freaky Friday for the intertanglement of 2004 drama or you watch Ella Enchanted starring Anne Hathaway because that movie slaps so hard Mm -hmm. and is also similar vibes Mm -hmm. what about you? what about me? I'm gonna pick Ella Enchanted because Hugh Dancy is in it, and Hugh Dancy plays Will Graham in the TV show Hannibal. Yeah, mm. which Cutie. if you watch, if you watch Ella Enchanted, you can immediately segue right into Hannibal. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're, I think you're it's doing gonna a be third. a good choice. Yeah. I think yeah. it's going to be a good choice. But I do think Freaky Friday is a good Ooh, follow-up yeah. because mm-hmm. I think they've just got a similar vibe. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah, same time yeah, period, for sure. same yeah. Chad Michael Murray type. Especially era. if you watch them knowing like this backstory. Yeah, now, exactly. Too. Mm-hmm. Like puts Lindsay a whole different Lohan perspective and, on it. And Hilary Duff, obviously, were mm-hmm. both having a moment yeah. at around the mm-hmm. same time. Plus, you know, Cinderella Story is kind of a remake. Freaky Friday mm-hmm. is a remake. So mm-hmm. there's there's a theme there as well. Yeah. Okay, so I think... Can, you... I, can I weigh in on yes, that? Yes, please, 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 please. So the little known fourth installment of a Cinderella Story... What? Is Cinderella Story a Christmas Wish with Laura Morano? Who? And, no idea. And um, Allie and AJ Girl. No, which one? Austin and Alley Girl. I'm sorry, Austin oh. and Alley Girl. Yep, and I thought it was really good. I watched mm. it late night by myself. You thought it was really good. Was it like a, a Hallmark? No, it's like Disney Channel. Okay, yeah. interesting. Good to know. That's my follow. Okay, in in fourth place, Jen's uh, suggestion: yeah. <laughs> some Christmas movie with some actress from some kids show. Um, no, I'm sorry. Hey, give her some credit. <laughs> She's no Ross Lynch. She didn't play Jeffrey that's Dahmer. Fair, that's fair. Um, but I, so. I usually contend that movies that are primarily oh shit, you know what would be good? What Ever After? Y- yeah, the one with Drew, Bar- with Drew Barrymore. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Get get into the nineties. Yeah, mm. yeah. Brandy did a live action. Yes, never mind. I, I changed my mind. I want that one. The one with Brandy. The um, <laughs> I'll take it. Whoopi Goldberg was the mom. There was oh. this very ethnically ambiguous family with Whoopi Goldberg and a white guy as the mom, and then the son was kind of. What about The Wiz? Just watch that. Just wait, watch that's... every movie. Wait, what am I saying? The Wiz that has nothing to do with Cinderella. That's with fucking. Anything. Yeah, sorry, I reject that. Was but... Brandy in The Wiz? No, I was. You just said Whoopi Goldberg, and it got me thinking. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but I usually contend that movies that have a primarily underage cast that we omit the fuck Mary kill. But I think we can. I think we can scrape by on this movie because uh-huh. I think that there's they're just all... enough for they're, us to work with. There's three main adults that. I, well, there's a couple more, but mm-hmm. are you thinking Jennifer Coolidge the Dead dad. And Rhonda. And Rhonda. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I don't give oh, a God. fuck about that yeah, man. I, I will kill him any day. Um, so, okay, I have my answer. It's, okay, listen, her father's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay. I'm gonna 
gonna kill very him. Very sound logic. <laughs> then I'm sorry. I'm gonna fuck Jennifer Coolidge because it's Jennifer Coolidge. Mm-hmm. And then I'm gonna marry Rhonda because I would be insane not to. I absolutely. I want to see her in that wedding dress. I a thousand percent agree with you. I'm getting a matching one. We make her dreams come true. Yes, I. We are. We're all marrying Rhonda, all three of us. <laughs> We're all gonna marry Rhonda. She just Should seems... we walk down the aisle arm in arm? Oh, I love, especially at the end, when she becomes, like, the owner. Uh-huh. Oh, I love that moment mm-hmm. for her when She's she becomes... She's managerial. Are you gonna... Hell yeah. Are you gonna fuck Jennifer Coolidge, though, or are you gonna fuck the dad? No, obviously I'm fucking Jennifer okay, Coolidge. Okay, okay, good. She's batshit crazy. I think yeah. they'd get along great. <laughs> We need some salmon afterwards. Uh-huh. It'd be really fun. You'd be like drinking champagne like afterwards too, like type thing. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. See, I thought sure. I would go into this with a certain opinion because uh-huh. I mistakenly believe that the principal was played by Holland Taylor, but then oh, I realized she's only, not. If only. So I'm gonna have to concur with, uh, yes. with your assessment mm-hmm. of it's the just, situation. It's just the correct. Yeah. yeah. It's the correct. Like, don't get me choice. wrong. Yeah. The dad's hot, but he just didn't yeah. leave too much of an impression on me. I he's don't dead. even. Yeah. He's dead. I he didn't, didn't put his will, like, in an obvious... Like, no, that's fucked up. He put the, his will in a children's book. He didn't leave his will with an attorney. He I thought the implication... His will in I, a lockbox at a bank. I thought the thing was that um, Jennifer Coolidge hid it. I thought... I did she steal it and hide I it? I thought the implication he, was that there was no, 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 there's no, no will, but she... No. Yeah, he's like, yeah, there's something in there that'll help you out later in life, and it's his will. Because I know your stepmother's a total whack job, and that's why I married her. Yeah, yeah, I really, really trust his judgment as a human for, I mean... He married this woman. Like, I know that she was supposed to seem all normal before and all whacked out post. She didn't. She was crazy before. She yeah. was crazy after. Is that, like, I, come on. Mm-hmm. Come yeah. on, Sam's dad. Like, you... Get a lawyer. Rise up. Yeah. If you're gonna do a will, get a lawyer. Get a real yeah. lawyer. Uh-huh. Oh, if don't you- stick your will in a book, hoping your kid is gonna find it after your untimely death. And also, you can help this man out. Listener, Aaron's a lawyer. This is this is one of the um, most interesting, prominent things about you is that you're one of the people I know who has a, a real job. Yeah. <laughs> I have uh-huh. a job. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, I've passed the bar, and my advice, if you want a will, is get a wills and estates lawyer. Don't ask me. Ask somebody who does this for a living. Because <laughs> I be, do not. Uh, like, uh, post-watching this movie, what would be your advice to a young Sam who just came into a great deal of money? I have no idea. Well, why would, my advice would be for her father, get an executor of the will who is not your, your clearly unstable second wife. Get a lawyer. Get your daughter a lawyer. Yeah. Get somebody who knows how to be, uh, you know, the executor of a will when there's, you know, a child involved. Like, the decision making pre death were, was not mm-hmm. great. He didn't yeah. expect to no. die. Nobody does, but. No, he yeah, knew. He, he had, saw it coming. He was like, there's that's why he be put his will in, in a book. A book. <laughs> Don't put your will in a book, is my advice. Put it, give it to your lawyer. Have your lawyer have your will. <laughs> Or, you know, I think banks keep them yeah. in, in safe deposit boxes. <laughs> this feels and, like common sense. Yeah. My advice yeah. is um, if you're going to marry Jennifer Coolidge, just know what you're getting into. Yeah. Unless you're that UPS guy because he, he uh, had it good. Take, no, that, but he knew. take, he, take that leap of faith. He if knew what he was UPS getting into. Oh, my, sure. my legal advice is always to consult a lawyer who has expertise in the area of law you're looking <laughs> for advice in. Yeah. Okay, and no. unless you're trying to enter the United States, I'm not your girl. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're going to rate this movie 1 through 10, what score would you give it? We only do this like 1 out of 10 times I know, on we this never podcast. actually get to this. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. Um, yeah, I didn't think long and hard about it. I'm going to give it a 5.5 because I'm not attached to it mm. in any sort of childhood capacity. But I know that it was a very decent childhood film mm-hmm. and re- even rewatching it like now as a full 22 year old i'm like it it's nice. it's entertaining yeah. i mm-hmm. had fun and it's jennifer coolidge so that's at least like four points there <laughs> yeah i was to gonna start with i was gonna give it a four like a half point goes for nostalgia and three and a half goes to jenny coolidge mm-hmm. you know it's just it is what it yeah, is five five and a half yeah i'm gonna go high and give it a seven largely because of the nostalgia factor this was a favorite movie of mm-hmm. mine as a kid as an adult, um, some of the line reads come across a little 
Oh, I thought, it was, I thought it was hilarious, though. When, when Hilary Duff is talking in this, like, weird, high-pitched, whiny voice most of the time, mm-hmm. and I was like, what the fuck are you doing, girl? But I, it made me crack up, so yeah, I, I was it, here for it. It was really entertaining. I will give it, it that. It was Like, having pretty much no recollection of it from my childhood, I was pretty invested in this film. And the soundtrack slaps. Yep, banger. Slaps so hard. So mm-hmm. I, I think we gotta leave it off at that. Yeah. Um, any Any closing comments? Do you think Jayla has a brown lawn? I just want to ask that. Absolutely fucking not. Mm-hmm. Her, no, no, no. Well, she has a brown lawn because right now she's staying with, with Ben Affleck, ben Affleck yeah. in Dorchester yeah. where no, no, there, no, no, no. there are it no is, green lawns. It is no. woke to have a brown lawn right now. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. You're not wrong. It's yeah. re- it's relatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so thank you for listening. Um, thank Thanks. you so much, Aaron, for yeah, being thank here. You. Thank this you. This is for great. Having me. You were a joy. Um, <laughs> please follow us on social media. Twitter and Instagram at the Swamp Pod, <laughs> TikTok at the Swamp Podcast. Email us at theswamppod at gmail.com. Go to our website, theswamppodcast.com. <laughs> uh, buy our merch, please. Yeah. We'll buy Jen some dinner sometime. <laughs> and uh, like our page on LinkedIn. Yeah, we have a full LinkedIn now. What? We're trying to be professional. Professional podcast or mm-hmm. what? I used the term hell yeah on LinkedIn and then I had like a 20 minute crisis because I was like, am I allowed to say that <laughs> on a professional website? <laughs> but then I remembered that I'm not a professional in any mm-hmm. capacity. So anyone yeah. could who would say yeah. that isn't really a big deal. Yeah, but. we're pretending to be professional as best yeah. as we can. Um, but thanks for listening and stick around the rest of this month where we're planning on watching some of the movies that you guys have yeah, sent into please. us. please. If you have any requests, send them last in. Minute, if you send in a last minute request that really knocks our socks off, mm-hmm. I promise that we might fulfill it because we have no decisions made thus far. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but we love hearing your requests. Even, you know, post this month, always send them in. We mm-hmm. always, I write down all of them. I swear I have this running. I put your yep. name, your little name next to your little movie suggestion and I, and I love them all. Even if I've never seen them, I go and I like watch a little trailer sometimes mm-hmm. just to like check it out and see what it's about. Yeah. So, um, thank you so much and we Sign lo- off. We love you almost as much as Chad Michael Murray loves pissing off his dad.